Hey there everyone, we are bringing you a special Annapolis Boat Show 2021 special. Boat Show special! We just had the most amazing week ever. Um, right now we are on our friend uh, Jeff's Catalina 36 West Wind, which you might be familiar with us taking down to Florida and back. Jeff and Cam. Jeff and Cam. Sorry, Cam wasn't on the trip, so we, that's why we were the crew. But it is their boat. And they let us stay on it so we could be right here in Annapolis for the heart of everything instead of having to drive across the Bay Bridge every day, a couple times a day. But anyway, um, wow, I don't even really know where to start. The fact is we kind of went to this boat show as anybody else would have. We wanted to get onto the boats. We wanted to talk to vendors. Um, a few Weird. of the vendors- Yeah, we're we have here to buy stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> a few of the vendors we have been familiar with because they have come out to the build site, but now we are able to see their whole displays at the boat show. And so in that sense, we're kind of like anybody else there, but what was different is we did get to participate in the sailing channels, uh, like YouTube booth, which was just amazing. Meeting all of you that came and saying hi and hearing your backstories of sailing and how you got into it. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible kind of seeing that wandering around the docks and all of a sudden people stopping by and saying, oh, we follow the build and uh, we love Norway and that kind of stuff. It was really encouraging. Uh, but as just mentioned, like I said, our whole objective well, besides that part of it, was really to go and borrow ideas from other boats, um, to to look in each one of them, look into the bilge areas and, and the wiring and all that kind of stuff of boats that were going to be similar to how we're constructing ours and some of that aren't even similar that are they're completely different, but just looking at and getting some of those ideas from, from new boats. And some of those boats, we didn't quite get to poke around all of the different parts just because I think we would have needed to schedule private appointments and we were just hopping aboard along with everybody else. Um, there was one boat that we really wanted to look into, which was not at the show, and that's the Vision Triple Four. Yeah, besides the Max Cruise well, that was which, not yes. at the show because of, of COVID. Arr. Um but luckily, one of our patrons did introduce us to the owners of the Vision Triple Four. So within the next few weeks, we will be going on that, checking things out, poking through all the bilges if they'll let us. So we did get to go on a number of boats and we're only gonna kind of talk about a few that relate to us and the build. And the one that's the most similar to the Max Cruise 42 that we're building in relations to size and somewhat layout is going to be the Outremer 45. And that's because it is a performance boat like ours. So it is going to have, you know, like the narrower hulls and be, I don't want to say like sparse, but kind of like toned down for luxury. <laughs> Focus in on lightweight and performance. Uh, so yeah, that, I yep. think that's the, the correct term. The correct part. term. And yeah. it kind of shows how our berths will be laid out because these only have like the uh, fore and aft bunks. There is the owner's hull where it does have like one aft bunk and like leading forward to a master head. And on the other guest hall, there is a smaller bunk forward and a bigger bunk um, with a head in the center. And that's kind of how ours is going to be laid out. The um, bridge deck area, our galley is going to be in a Quite different, a different spot. There. So like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but as far as just kind of size goes. The, the basic construction of the boat is fairly similar. And that's what we're, again, we're looking at. Uh, the idea of, of walking through it and getting uh, a feel for the widths of the hulls. Now ours is a bit narrower than that boat. Um, so it will be slightly different. But it, versus getting on a Lagoon 56 or whatever like that, that just doesn't even relate at all. This is the closest kind of match within the show of what exactly. we have. Yeah. And within that, um, we didn't quite poke around in their bilges but we did see you know how they had their closets inboard over that chamfer panel like we're going to yeah. the outboard side was pretty bare they did end up using liners on the ceiling and in boat terms ceiling means wall overhead is over your head so they used liners on the ceiling which i don't know if we'll do 
and um, they put veneered surf or uh, veneer coverings on everything, which I also don't know if we'll do. But that kind of brings us to a later point of how yeah. we actually want ours to look. So it was the way that Ultramar designs it. Um, uh, because of labor costs, it's very labor intensive to go through and fair out the interior. Mm -hmm. So leave it where it's just the, the fiberglass, but go through and, and sand it and all that kind of stuff and make it pretty and then paint it. It's very, very labor intensive in France. Of course, labor rates are high. So they have to come up with a way of making it an attractive surface. And the way they do that is they kind of extend out the hull a little bit um, towards the inside and they put boards up and on those boards are a piece of plywood or I don't even know actually what they use for that but a piece of plywood let's say a quarter inch thick six millimeters um, and then put vinyl over the top of that and that covers that whole wall that that whole ceiling um, side of it and um, it just makes it look nice it's, it's a nicely finished design with that but that adds weight. And so I'll let Matt talk about some of his favorites, but as far as interior design and layout, again, the size is totally different. The bunks are going to be different because we're 42, but my favorite at the show actually was the Kinetic 54. And it was very, I want to say sparse, but it was um, very toned down. All of the surfaces were yeah. fared painted they did have the webbings on the whole sides like we will they kind of had them as shelves is structural for us we wanted to find a way to integrate those into the design and even just the doors um it's very rugged the door shapes they have because they're just using the bulkheads they have no trim no wood but somehow it just looks very clean and because of all the light coming in on that white paint it looks bright and i absolutely loved that um I don't think we're going to have the uh, carbon fiber toilet. No, nor are they <laughs> th they're both all solid carbon fiber with a $2.4 million price tag to, to match that. So, of course, it's going to be slightly different. What do you think of the carbon toilet? <laughs> uh, that is beautiful. I think it's like ten or $20,000. Carbon sink. Um, and that minimalistic design is kind of essential for weight. Uh, we need, again, keep the weight down. That's, that's the reason we're building this boat is to have a performance boat. So we need to keep the weight down. So we're not going to have any of the hardwoods that we did on the last boat or the boat before that. Um, which again, I absolutely love that design. It was very appropriate for the metal boat and very appropriate for the design of Serendipity or Sabre, um, before that as well. Those heavy woods and that heavy wood look just in a performance catamaran just doesn't look right. It's, it's two kind of opposing things. So we need to keep that minimalistic style, which I know some people kind of liken it to an Ikea interior, um, but th there's a reason for that. It's not just a, um, a cost situation. It's because every single time you add anything over the top, an extra layer or an extra piece of trim, we're adding weight for no structural benefit it's just for cosmetics and then that kind of again just kind of defeats the whole purpose so the the idea is we're going to have mostly painted surfaces with wood trim veneers applied to things like our, our cabinet doors yep. um, most likely and maybe just a little trim piece uh, and maybe the the doors themselves that are leading in between the bulkheads into the different areas and another thing that I took away from the kinetic that I loved is we're trying to figure out um, seating both within the salon and the cockpit. So we've talked about movable structures and um, the Utremer kind of had it in like this bigger, heavier storage facility that you could use as I think the navigation seat, put it in the table, maybe bring out to the cockpit. But with the Kinetic had, and we could maybe build ourselves if we have some leftover foam, is just like these open glossy squares with a little cushion on the top and I mean, for us, yeah, we could do the same thing, put it at the nav seat, we could bring it into the our current design of the L shape uh, settee, you know, bring it out in the cockpit, and I just I loved the look of it. So that's something I took away too that I would like to bring onto our boat. So, something very, very easy to build, um, just basically it's an ottoman, but a uh, hollow side ottoman um, and very type light of thing. Too. But it makes it incredibly light, which, which 
for the overall weight of the boat. But again, the other thing too is moving that piece from, if it's going to be a versatile piece that you're moving around the boat, moving it from the nav desk to an ottoman to out in the cockpit if we want it to. Was there anything else you took away from the Kinetic? Uh, it was just gorgeous. It was Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. It was built in South Africa, built in Nizna, which is where we wanted to build mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, it's a U.S. company. Uh, they, they've done a phenomenal job. Their, their larger one uh, is really nice too. The 54 is beautiful. Uh, they had some great designs with the davit set up where you could flip that up to reduce your length and use that back swim platform area. They even had uh, seats behind the helms that folded into the whole side, which was kind of a cool design. Too. Yeah, it was a nice, nice setup for that. It, it was a boat that that you could race on the weekend and cruise the rest of the time type of thing. They did a really neat thing with a duckboard, uh, basically the platform that flips down um, and closes the cockpit when you're sailing, and then you kind of can flip it down and lower that down in a position to have a nice big swim platform. That was a great idea. Not something that we can easily implement, but it was really, really cool. Uh, but it was just you could tell everything was done with quality materials. Um, again, it's all carbon fiber, all foam cord, uh, all infused, just, just beautifully done. And speaking about other foam cord boats, the balance catamarans, they had, what was it, the 485? 482. 482 and the, yep. the 526, yep. which we did get aboard both of those. And that was another one that personally I was looking at um, finishes more again because the layout, yep. totally different, different leagues of boats. And um, even just like the radius of corners, you know, things that we need to start paying attention to soon as we're going to be getting our furniture for the inside of the boat is, yeah. you know, how big do we want the radius? And, like, do we want it to come to a square? Do we want it rounded? How round? Yeah, we, we won't do points, of course. You get sharp points, you jab it's into them, which is not a, not a great, great thing. And we did actually notice that on some of the boats, for the boat show, they had plastic little caps over them, the sharp corners, because I'm sure people were bouncing into them. <laughs> and if that's happening at the boat at show the boat when you're show, at, the, at dock, the dock, it's probably not a good sign. Um, so we'll radius the corners. It's just as to how much of a radius we actually like. A lot of that is aesthetics. There are some safety reasons for it as well. Like we were just talking about with the points. Um, but I, I don't love big round um, edges. So that's, we're gonna do something a little bit sharper. And again, something to figure out. And I think it was within the uh, 48 foot balance, you did start poking around a little bit <laughs> in like the head and other areas. So uh, let me quick go to that clip. This is what you can hear the difference. Just, it sounds incredibly light. So this is the same stuff we are using. This is a foam cord uh, composite panel here. And what they do is they just finish off the edges, add in, typically use a wood block that you put in here, and another one where the hinges go, and that's what gives the structure for at least a latch and where the screw points for the hinges themselves. But yeah, very cool to sit there and see it then kind of feel it. You can just, again, you can just feel that there's one of those, no... One like, millions of green pieces under a boat right now will eventually be this. One of these, yeah. Yeah, just there's no weight to this thing at all. Yeah, so it's just a... They did a quick fare in, like, this area, which is easy enough to do. No real big bumpity spots, but... Understandable, it's just a simple storage. Mm -hmm. Holding tank back here. So much about ice yeah. Water heater. And it's just like us. It's all the conduit ran up in the chamfer panel there. You can see where that all runs. Yeah, this is definitely the, the closest to our build. What it's going to be like. like materials and mm -hmm. finishes and yeah, you can see where the stanchions come down the base of the stanchion. Um, so we'll do something real similar to that. So instead of actually having a bracket or holes on deck, um, this is either a socket system. So the stanchion itself, the post comes down in it, and then there's little drains in there. You don't necessarily need them, um, or you have an insert, a pole that comes up above deck, and then that the stanchion actually slides down on top of it. Now the world's largest shower. Yep. Boat or not. Massive shower. Over here, steering system. Side up, 
again, we're going to be the same setup, uh, basic thing. This is for their Versa Helm, um, that Jaffa steering unit. So it does need a bigger setup there because it has to be able to articulate along the base there. And then it's the same thing with this. When anywhere anyone does it, and hopefully we can capture that, but whenever anyone adjusts that, you can see where these kind of move a little bit to, to just adjust for that new angle. And everything for the winches, some of the autopilot stuff here, but it's all nice and neat. So the actual materials used, the balance is much closer to the max screws and how, how we're setting ours up. Um, everything is foam cord. I believe they're using vinyl ester resin as well. Um, they use carbon fiber just in certain areas, which again is kind of like how we're doing the max screws, um, specific materials. But everything is that lightweight where we have veneers lying over the top of foam cord for cabinet doors, all those types of things. So that was pleasant going through and looking at that and just seeing how they did their hinges, how they did their catches for door latches, um, where they used actually solid wood to kind of trim it out to, to, to do those radius corners, that kind of stuff. It was basically looking into our future <laughs> is what it was. And we were asking yeah. how many hours went into fairing and painting and yep. it was a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of time. And again, that's that in contrast to the Uchimur, again, the balances are built in South Africa as well. And so they go through and fair out all those surfaces that paint all those surfaces. Which is what we're looking for. Yep, which is again, what we're looking for. But it was really cool going through and seeing how they laid out their electrical cabinet. Um, they did a beautiful job. I absolutely loved how they did that. Um, and it's, it's we're going to have that same setup where you come into the owner's hall and that whole wall is going to be a hanging locker, um, closet, and a cabinetry that, that houses all of our electrical components. So we're able to access it both from the front and the rear in the hall. So it makes it really easy to go through and check things. And for just the construction part of it, when I'm going through and wiring everything, it's all housed in that one area. And I don't have to keep opening and shutting it. Um, I can see it all right there. So real similar with that setup, we're also able to go through and look at their steering system, which ours will be very, very similar to that. Um, go through and check all their plumbing um, layout, but it was it's it's just a very very cool boat. Uh, would love to try to sail it, sailing one, um, get a feel for it. But of course, this is a bit different because it is a longer mm -hmm. boat. It's 48 feet or 52 feet, and their wider hulls were quite a bit narrower hulls, so it's we, we should have a little bit more performance than than that boat. Um, and so it's kind of going through and comparing how you know we walk through the hallway leading forward of the boat um what our width is going to be versus theirs and some of the aesthetic things that come from that because theirs was a little bit wider they could have hanging lockers on both sides mm -hmm. um and it didn't feel real tight we realized with the narrowness of of those those passageways leading forward that we really if we're going to have hanging lockers on one side we really can't have it on the the outboard side because it's just going to feel too tight and too, too narrow through that so that again a lot of it was just sitting there and looking at it and watching people pass each other too um going in those halls and just walk it, watching the interaction of people and and a lot of the people aren't boaters full-time boaters and that kind of stuff so just seeing how they grab things and what they grab for is important as to how we lay ours out as well mm -hmm. Uh, and a few takeaways I got from the 48 foot balance from the exterior is um, theirs was kind of cool the way that they ran the lines to the raised helm and just like us, it's a raised helm on the starboard side. Um, the 526 is a little bit different. I think like they realized they were getting too much friction the way that one was set up. So now it comes to winches at the station and then all of the lines just like drop into bags or kind of compartments right there. And then even just silly things, Matt has, Matt will go through every night and show me photos because he spends all of his nights <laughs> on his computer, like looking at designs. So that he trying has to an figure idea. this all out for the trying. next step. Yep. And yep. so he will show me. And for some reason, I love the cockpit seat on the 48 foot balance, just the design of it. And it looks really comfortable. So it's kind of fun seeing that in person too. And also how they integrated uh, cameras into certain areas up the mast and by the anchor locker, which got me thinking that. Um, 
we'll be we'll be installing some cameras too, but more for our, like YouTube purposes, really than steering. <laughs> I mean, it could do for really? both. <laughs> yeah. No, no, they will be for steering and and. But I'm saying we can place cameras anywhere uh -huh. for for YouTube, uh, like looking at us behind the house. Oh. Uh, yeah, we probably won't be doing that, but uh, we will be installing cameras for actual lookout and that kind of stuff as well, because the technology is now there at this point. Um, so, so our takes, uh, two our different takes, takes different. on the same thing, I guess. Um, you, we can tell you can tell we have different jobs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it was neat going through and seeing again the ingress egress, the way that they design some of the the places, the handhold areas. Um, oh some yeah, of the things that they we have one built right into. The grab cabin rail top. right on the cabin top which is a great idea great setup for that seen it done on a few other boats um we're a little bit after that stage so unfortunately we can't integrate those things in there but that is something that i will be mentioning to max cruz that that might be something to mold in to, to one the of the later models in the cabin tops i just think it's a great way to do it to integrate that all in there and you can probably use it it ends up acting as a gutter then um so you can probably if you water catchment that kind of stuff too with it so a good idea, not something that we can easily transfer over to that because these pieces are already are there and molded and in our possession now. But uh, it is just something that, that we can think about. Um, um, a lot of it was winch placement, as Jess was mentioning, um, where our hands glass, fell yeah. for the different things, the different tasks. Um, it, so, so yeah, great idea there, great setup there. The other thing, too, was going inside in the 48-foot, if I remember right, did not have the nav desk. Um, they have kind of a chart table, stand-up chart table in it. And that's one of the things that Justin and I are trying to figure out, too, is the current setup for the Max Cruise has a nav desk that's forward-facing. Um, allows us to sit there and stare out. But having had a pilot house boat before, um, we know how we sit in what we do when we're on passage. Um, and we think at this point, we're kind of leaning towards having a U-shaped um, settee and, and having a rear facing nav desk or a no nav desk at all and just using the, the salon table as a desk. Which also what it. he's talking about the Vision 444 has that so when we get aboard that we can kind of uh, show you in detail a little bit more. Yeah so we're looking at some different options there and that's kind of the beauty of building your boat is we're not constrained to anything we can kind of do what we want and what makes most sense for the way that Jess and I use the boat and um, so that we're, we're going to hold off of course on doing those things until we're at that point or until we get aboard the max cruise that is going to be here hopefully for the Miami show and we can get a feel for it and get a use for it but one thing the balance does and the vision does as well is they have raised the settees there's a step leading up to get into that area and what that does is that gives you much better visibility around so i think we're going to do that regardless if we have the nav desk up front or whatever we're going to end up raising the settee up and the way again jess and i sit we're, we're seldom are we sitting with our feet on the ground in full upright position we're usually slouched down <laughs> kind of leaning with our Lounge feet kicked up back. lounging yeah. back type of thing and with that um and where our, our eyes I point is um, height is it would bring us down low enough in the current configuration that we'd be looking at like the window sill and not actually out the windows so by raising up the settees we do gain that extra thing so that is something that it, it being aboard the balance allowed me to look at and I can't wait to get aboard the vision too and mm -hmm. see how there's a setup oh and kind of like on a note about looking at like one thing that for some reason was just in my mind I think because Matt and I have been talking about it is blinds setups are they recessed behind other areas Areas? Are they just kind of like sitting out and drop down? Do they are they curtains that pull across? We actually didn't see any of those, but that was one thing I got pretty into as well, looking around. <laughs> so we may end up doing something like that too, with just a trim board that comes down and allows to again have those recessed blinds. Allows us to do recessed lighting in that area, kind of oh, some yeah. dramatic recess down lighting, lighting in there too. In that's what I've noticed on the new builds and new boats nowadays is they have paid a lot more attention to lights. They're not just random lights in the cabin top. They're now doing accent lights um, either below the kick panel for the cabinetry in, in the galley or um, up lighting around the bed or below the bed or mm -hmm. windows and that kind of stuff. It's just there's so much more thought put into that. and. Um, I think we did a pretty good job on elements with it. We had a lot of directional facing lights, but this will be 
the next step now that rope lighting has come come around mm -hmm. in much better quality than than what you get with better light colors too exactly and one of the last boats i want to bring up and was one that we didn't go besides the hh besides the oh okay apparently matt's gonna talk about the hh he probably took away more than i did uh awesome. <laughs> we made new friends of fabio and Kristen of harbors unknown they had their sea wind 1600 there and just as the show was honestly like getting broken down they were taking away the things as we were standing there so yeah. it was a little rushed um they took us around and i did film a few of the things that interest us like they have a basically like a door vent in the head to like suck air out i think through their daggerboard case yeah it actually went through the daggerboard case so that it has kind of cool. um it, an exhaust that went through there and was concerned that maybe you get some smells coming through there from anything growing in the daggerboard case but apparently it's, it works extremely well it's a great idea and something that we can actually do in our port side head because Case cases right, right there. there yeah and then another is they have uh cassette rudders which we're looking at doing that's, so that's what we'll have as cassette rudders yep. so so we i kind of pulled out the camera like little gorilla style again wasn't planning on filming this so here's um a shaky and not very uh flowy uh segment where we take a look at what they had there oh my god oh that is awesome did it they come up yellow bingo yep oh yeah so yeah, so yeah, take a look at that. That's Christy, the big can thing. You, it's all let me tell you, can you undo that line okay. so I can turn it over? Yeah. So this goes all the way down through, and there's a cut at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this will come out. Wow. Yeah. Very light. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, so, and you have plenty of room. And here, look at the size of the. Oh wow! Of the rudder control. Oh yeah, that's the underside. So it is readily available, yeah, readily right accessible, there. right yeah. there. And since we're going with the cassette rudders, I actually shot this just for myself, <laughs> and we're using it here, so that's why it's all shaky. Yeah. But uh, um, I wanted to see how they did that on the C1 1600. The C1 1190 has them exposed in the rear, like. Uh, probably closer to what we're gonna do. Um, but the uh, uh, 1600 has them kind of underneath the swim step. So you can flip that up, you can get access to them. Otherwise you flip it down and no one's the wiser that they're even there. Um, it, it's really was interesting going through and seeing the mechanics of how they have uh, engineered it to give the drive and the control for those rudders how their um, the steering mechanism actually is laid out so they did a great job with it they used um, a different setup than what i originally anticipated so we will be probably borrowing some ideas from that because it seems to work really well having it kind of in that recess setup so i think that was that was a really useful tool um, going through and just seeing and Fabio was kind enough to open everything up so we could see exactly where everything ran and how that worked. We're a single raised helm, they're kind of dual aft helm closer to that scenario. So it is a slightly different with the way the quadrants are set up, but at least we can get an idea of how that's set up or how that's played out. You know, there were, the Sea Wind is just a beautiful boat, um, nicely laid out and it was great being able to talk to them in, in hearing the real nitty gritty from them as to what they've liked, what they didn't like. Um, and I'm not going to share any of that, but uh, it really gave us some good ideas in, of what we should do and what we probably don't want to do on this boat. And now the HH. Oh, it was beautiful. It was so immaculately finished it was perfection uh very very envious they put an absolute ton of hours you can see in it every surface is perfectly fared the paint finish on the interior was oh, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and all the veneers the way the veneers were laid out and stuff we've been on gunboats before uh, been on hh's before and i think they have kind of perfected that uh the I don't know how many millions of dollars that boat was, but uh, there's there's a reason for it. It was just uh, it was a very unbelievably boat. Uh, well well built boat. Um, yeah, I mean I liked the layout, I liked all that kind of stuff, but that was my main takeaway. It was just there wasn't a single thing that I looked at and went, oh, there's a flaw there or anything like that. It was just mm -hmm. it was spotless. And this is a boat that had been actively, I think it's been actively crewed for a 
cruised for over a year now and it's still in that condition which is kind of just a testament to how well it's been built. So as you can see, we've stepped on some of these uh, million and two million dollar boats to try and get ideas and mostly just see what's in our future. I have always been through this build to kind of like take it one day at a time, look at the project that's right in front of you. Uh, I think Matt's kind of like a step back and look at the whole thing, which this forced me to do and everything that's left to do. Yeah, there's, there's a ton. It was pretty overwhelming when you start sitting down in there and you're looking at it going okay i need to do that and 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 just adding up in my mind the amount of time it takes to do each one of these little things um i i'm absolutely looking forward to doing the electrical the plumbing the mechanical side of it um doing the finishes and that but the stages to get to that point all the fairing and sanding and all the extra glass work we need to do still um yeah so you probably won't i was gonna, I was gonna say not that you won't hear from us much over the winter but we're just gonna put our heads down and work and probably not be as social as we were over the summer and into the fall just so we can get ourselves like to the fun stuff of the electrical and the plumbing and absolutely and start doing veneers yeah so we made it through boat show and we got to end it by watching them take everything down which is a fun process so we'll leave you with that but um otherwise we had an amazing time and we are already looking forward to next year so if you did not come please come next year we're going to be at the sailing channels booth again yep. we're going to be doing more patreon meetups we did have the one at the tent and so many people came out, took Ubers even. I really appreciate I know, that you made that the effort. So. so we will, next year we will open up to the public as well. Um, we'll have a, kind of an open house day. We wanted to kind of see how it went. Um, it's a, bit, a, construction a little site. bit more. It's a construction site and we have insurance issues, liability, that kind of stuff with a bunch of people just flocking yeah. in or something like that. We needed to just kind of see how it played out. Um, next year we'll do an open house um, set up for that. So if you're in the area, please come and see it. But thank you, Jeff and Cam. Yes. Thank you, Ryan. Um, you guys are all stars and we could not have had the success if it wasn't for you guys. So that is the end of boat show. We hope you enjoyed our little look through and make sure to leave your comments below on if you were there, what you thought about the show, any of the boats in the show, we would love to hear your opinion. There is a life valley in the city. Mix. I was looking at the camera. Doesn't make it easy. The other piece of my heart goes so somewhere in the great unknown. When I return from the afterglow, will you carry me like I am? He's getting too excited. I'm scared for him. I could take you back to my youth And show you what I wish I knew My will is strong with a place to lean In the moment I hung best belief The other ring of my wrist is gold Pairing with the light it holds When I return from my skin and bone
things are done Wait, hold on Put me together Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone 